Telehealth can't replace in-person sessions, but we can try to recreate one so your clients can have a positive telehealth experience and will want to keep scheduling with you. So if you want to provide the best telehealth experience for your clients, here are three mistakes you want to avoid and how to fix them. And if you watch to the end, I'll give you a bonus tip to level up your telehealth sessions. The first mistake you want to avoid is poor video angles. Whenever you meet with a client in person, you're probably sitting in chairs and on couches that keep you at eye level. And this should also apply to your video telehealth sessions. You want to have your camera at eye level. If the camera angle is too low, your client will be staring up at your nose and it kind of creates this I'm above you effect. If your camera is too high, then you have a security camera look, which isn't good either. Here's the trick that videographers and photographers use. It's called the rule of thirds. The way they frame a shot is that they use the rule of thirds principle. The way the rule of thirds works is that it places the subject and it's usually with their eyes somewhere on this grid. This produces a natural looking feel to the picture. Now watch how you respond when there's a poorly framed image. How does this make you feel if you had a telehealth session where I was in the bottom corner of your video feed the whole time? It would be really awkward, right? It'd probably make you feel a little uncomfortable and you'd probably want to fix it. So if you keep your camera at eye level and place it in the middle on the upper third of the frame, like this, the video that you're now seeing, this will give your client a better telehealth experience. Okay, a quick bonus tip on camera angles. If you're using a computer camera that's on the top of your computer, have your video application as close to the top as you can get to that camera. That way, when you look at your client, your eyes are pointed towards the camera. So it looks like you're providing really good eye contact. Some of you might be asking, well, Brent, that's a good idea, but I have a laptop and I sit at my kitchen table or my desk and I can't get it to eye level. But you could just get some of those big, thick counseling books that you paid hundreds and thousands of dollars for and just prop your laptop up to eye level. Or you could get one of those laptop lifters that gets your laptop off of the desk. If you don't get the camera angle right, your client will not experience positive eye contact with you and it will make them feel like you don't care. Even though you are looking at them at the video screen, they are not seeing your eyes on the other end. So keep your video application window up towards your camera so you can make better eye contact. When it comes to video, remember these two things. Keep your face and eyes on the top third of your screen and put your telehealth application towards the top of your screen to make good eye contact using your video camera. The second mistake you need to avoid making is dim lighting. Lighting is so important. Imagine a client walks into your office and you had the room almost completely dark. That would really throw them off. So here are two crucial things you need to avoid when it comes to lighting. Don't have your appointments in a dark room. Now this might be obvious, but I see this all the time. Your clients should be able to clearly see you. It's important for your clients to see your eyes and your body language. The first thing you need to do, if possible, is to sit in front of a window or in a room where there's a lot of natural light. If you're in a darker room, just bring a lamp over to your desk. Just get light closer to your face. Don't let the only thing lighting your face be your computer screen. One of my clients has a window in her office, but it doesn't provide enough light. So she bought a desk light, something like this, for her desk to provide just a little more light for her telehealth sessions so her clients could see her more clearly. The second lighting mistake to avoid, and I see this all the time, is when someone has a major light source like a window or a lamp behind them instead of front of them. This creates what I call the witness protection video effect. You all know what I'm talking about. For example, I'm going to turn off my main light source in this video that's hitting me right in the face and watch what happens. I go dark and you can't see my face. You just see a silhouette. Don't do this to your clients. Don't have your main light source behind you, but in front of you. Always have the stronger light source coming at you and hitting your face and not from behind. All right, as this video continues to play, let me and others know in the comments below what you've been doing to create a positive telehealth experience for your clients. And as I get ready to share my third mistake to avoid, if this has been helpful, could you give it a thumbs up? I'm also providing for you a free telehealth checklist for you to download, print out, and keep by your computer to make sure you are ready to provide amazing telehealth experiences for your clients. I'll tell you a little bit more about this at the end of this video. Okay, on to the third mistake. The third mistake you need to avoid is bad audio. If I were to qualify the components of what makes quality video, it would be this. 25% would be video resolution. 
25% would be lighting, and 50% would be audio. People can tolerate bad video quality, but they will absolutely not tolerate bad audio. This is why you need to prioritize audio in your telehealth sessions. Even if you have terrible video quality or no video at all, you need to have clear audio. If you were to make one investment in making your telehealth sessions better, it would be improving your audio quality. My first tip is always to wear headphones, no matter what, wear headphones. Headphones will eliminate any feedback loops that are created by your computer microphone, picking up audio coming through your computer speakers. And using headphones will eliminate the risk of someone else overhearing your telehealth session. So at a minimum, always wear headphones. You can use the ones that come with your cell phone, you could use Bluetooth headphones, or even high-end noise-canceling headphones. Just always wear headphones. Just wear headphones. It will make a massive difference in your telehealth sessions. Now, if you would like to go a bit further in providing a better audio experience, consider using an external microphone that you can use to get really close to your mouth. Audio always sounds better when it's closest to the source. You'll see a lot of podcasters and radio folks use these mics. The good news is, is that great microphones are really affordable. For example, you can start with headphones that have a microphone attached to them. Now you might look like a call support agent, but you'll have a much more clear sound coming from one of these mics because it's closer to your mouth. It's closer to the audio source. This Impal headset that I'm showing you right now is a cheap one and it starts to hurt my ears after wearing it a little while, but it does get the job done. Here's an audio example of this. This is a sample of the audio that you can get from using a microphone that's really close to your mouth. And at the end of the day, you want really good sound quality when it comes to telehealth. If you plan to do a lot of telehealth sessions, buy a good quality headset microphone. If you have Bluetooth headphones like the AirPods, go ahead and use those. You should be able to connect them to your computer and use them as a microphone source as well. The other thing you can do is if your headphones don't have a built-in microphone, is to purchase a USB microphone anywhere probably between $99 and $200 and you will 10X your audio quality. You will sound something like me in this video because I'm using a good microphone. The two microphones that I recommend are these two. The first one is an Audio-Technica ATR2100X USB and the other one is the Rode NT USB mini condenser microphone. They sound amazing and are really inexpensive for the quality you get and you will level up your client's telehealth experience with great audio. Okay, before I get to my bonus tip, I want to let you know that I'm providing a free telehealth checklist for you to download. It is a sheet that you can reference right before you have a telehealth session to make sure your video and your lighting and your audio is ready to go. You can find a link to that download below this video. Okay, here's your bonus tip for telehealth sessions. To level up your telehealth sessions and to minimize any distractions, especially with video telehealth, you need a solid internet connection. Having a solid internet connection is like having your office space open with the lights on and the doors unlocked so you can have a session with your client. If you don't have a consistent internet connection, it's like your office is closed. Your internet connection doesn't have to be fast. It just has to be consistent. You need at least two megabytes of consistent upload speeds and at least two megabytes of consistent download speeds. So here are a few things you can do to make sure your connection to the internet is optimized for video telehealth. The first one is check your internet speed. Go to speedtest.net. It's free, it's easy to use, and it'll give you a quick glance about how consistent and how strong your internet speeds are. My other tip is to plug directly into your internet router. If you can plug directly into your router, this is the best option. All you need is an ethernet cable and possibly an adapter depending on your computer. I need a USB-C to ethernet adapter for my MacBook Pro in order to plug directly into my router. Most likely, there are other devices wirelessly streaming Netflix, music, YouTube, videos, whatever, at the same time, and this will slow down your internet speeds. It's kind of like an interstate highway. If there's a lot of devices on your wireless router and streaming content, then your wireless connection speeds will be slow because there's so much traffic on it. But if you plug into your router, it's kind of like you're in the express lane or the carpool lane. You will have the advantage of having your own private lane with more consistent speeds than with a wireless connection because there's so much traffic on it. If internet speed is a problem, just kindly ask those on to stop streaming videos while you're holding a telehealth appointment. If you can't connect directly to your router, 
then get as close as you can to your router with a wireless connection. The closer you are to your wireless router, the stronger the connection and faster the speed. If you're still experiencing a bad connection, just turn off your camera and have your telehealth session just with the audio. You can turn on your camera later if the quality improves. If you're planning on making telehealth a regular part of your private practice, either in the office or in the home, consider upgrading your internet speeds. It's a small expense compared to the revenue you'll be making by having stronger internet speeds and telehealth clients wanting to come back to you because they're having a good experience. Again, having a strong internet connection is like having your physical office doors unlocked with the open sign on. You'll need to have it in order to facilitate telehealth appointments. Be sure to download my telehealth checklist found below this video so you'll be ready to look good, sound great, and minimize any interruptions so you can provide the best telehealth care for your clients. The link again is in the description below. If you need help growing your private practice, just go to brandyourpractice.com and you can get in touch with me and my team there. If you have a question, leave it in the comments below and I'll answer it. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you'll know when I'll release my next video. Click here to watch the biggest mistake most business owners make or click here to watch the private practice roadmap video if you're looking to grow your caseload or your private practice. Thank you for watching.